Welcome to another episode of Fish Daytona. Today we're at Bing's Landing up here in Flagler County with Jim McCartney from the Flagler County Sport Fishing Club. Why don't you tell our fans a little bit about what's going on and what you're doing today out here. In uh, Flagler County we have a sports fishing club. We have uh, 208 members and uh, this is our fishing cl clinic for kids. We've already had over 125 kids here show up so far. So they were waiting here this morning. Uh, we have eight different booths that uh, the kids go to and it teaches them all about fish, how to cast, how to cast net, how to cast with their rod and reels. Uh, uh, Whitney Laboratories here with their touch tank. So it's just a great thing for the kids, just uh, teaching them uh, uh, everything that they should know uh, here at the uh, Bing's Landing today. What we're going to do is we're going to take off and walk around with the kids and check out everything. So stay tuned. We'll be right back with more Fish Daytona. This segment made possible by Atlantic Marine, sales, service, and storage, located in Port Orange. Jim, how long have you guys been doing this for the kids? This is our first year, and we're expecting next year to be really, really bigger than this. Uh, the FWC, we're planning on getting them in here next year and having more different things for the kids to go through and see. So uh, uh, this is going to be a year after year thing here. I can't wait to get my turn and get in there with them. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, it's been a lot of work, but boy, it's well worth it to create a lot more fishermen. Good. Yeah. You know, they say that old cliche about teach a man to fish. Well, you teach a kid to fish, you got a fishing buddy for life. You better believe it. Hey, it's just like owning a dog. After you teach them to fish, they never leave you, do they? No, they don't. No, so. don't. Well, let's go get this thing done. Okay, let's do it. In order to be a good angler, one of the things that's very, very important is that you respect the water that we're out here fishing in. You right? take care of that water, it'll take care of you, right? And the fish. Okay, now this is an example of what happens when we don't take care of the water. Right? all kinds of garbage floating in the water there, right? Now let me ask you a question. Would you like to go swimming in that? Uh, no. no. Do you think the fish like to swim in that? No. No way, right? And that's yeah. why we have to make sure that that doesn't happen because otherwise fish swim into garbage, they get stuff wrapped around them like fishing line and plastic fish. and all pieces of metal they eat and things like that and it kills the fish, right? And the Right, so we want to take care of the fish because we want them to be good for when we want to, eat, you know, catch them and eat them, right? Or catch them and let them go. One of the things that uh, I like to talk about is plastic bags, for instance, right? What, what does a plastic bag look like when it's floating in the water? Jellyfish. That's jellyfish, right? And do you know there's things that eat jellyfish? Sea turtles. Sea turtles. What happens if a sea turtle comes by and thinks he sees a jellyfish and he eats it? get stuck in his stomach. That's right, right? So we don't want that to happen, right? We want to take care of our sea creatures out there. We have all kinds of things to be concerned with. We got fish and sea turtles and manatees and all kinds of things out there. So we want to take care of that water, right? This is an example of, of the way f people used to be able to catch fish out here in Florida. They could go out there and catch as many of them, as big as they wanted, as small as they wanted, and no one would tell them whether it's right or wrong, right? And what Florida has done is they've come up with a couple of uh, magazines that you can actually get these for free in just about any place that you can go get a fishing license. These are what they are, and they're absolutely free. Now this magazine over here is, is actually the regulations. It tells you what fish you can keep and not keep. It tells you how big they have to be and how many of them you can have, right? This one over here, will actually identify the fish and, and uh, like suppose you're fishing down there you catch something you've never seen before yeah. well you can find it in this magazine and then you can go back here and see whether it's legal for you to keep it or not okay so he's going to show you how to measure the two kinds of fish so that you can do it the right way uh, over here we have a, what they call a flat tail fish more or less and this is called a schnook now to measure a schnook you have to pinch the tail at the back, hold the tail closed, get your tape measure there at the end, and measure to the mouth. And that will give you the fish's length. Now, if that fish is within the length that's in the rules and regulations, you can keep it. Now, this fish here has a size limit where you have to throw it back as well. If it's too big, it has to go back. It has a season, and it must have a special permit when it's in season to fish for it. Some of these fish have what they call fork tails, right? 
and you have to measure them different than these other fish that have like flat tails in the back, right? Alaska Jewelry Castle carries sea life and sport fishing designs. When your passion is for fishing, you're never far from the sea. For over 30 years, our family owned and operated Castle Crew takes pride in treating everyone like royalty. So stop by and see us today. My name's uh, Captain Mike Vickers. Uh, along with the uh, Flagler County Sports Fishing Club, uh, we organized this uh, kids fishing clinic. Uh, it was sponsored by uh, FWC, which is Florida, Florida Wildlife Commission. They're responsible for all the tables and stations that we have set up here today. Along with uh, FWC is Fish Florida. Fish Florida uh, provides us with publications, uh, free rods and reels and tackle boxes that we uh, normally give to these children. Okay, the way they raise their money is from the specially licensed plates, uh, in particular uh, the manatee, the dolphin, the turtles, and so forth like that. Now, if you catch snappers around here, snappers can pretty much go down to the bottom if you release them. But in deep water, they have a tendency to build up an air pocket in their belly. And what will happen is they can't go down. It's like putting a life jacket on a fish. So what you have to do to get it so we can go back down to the water, they have this thing called a venting tool. And you poke it just over here behind the fin and below the backbone. There's an air pocket there, and you can hear the air come out because this is a hollow tube and it lets the air out. Once it releases the air, you can take the fish and put them back in the water and he'll swim down to the bottom. Fins. These are his fins. Hey, does anyone know what that is? No, fish hooker. That's a fish de-hooker, right? When that, when, that, when that fish has his hook down in there, you grab the hook and put this right down next to where the curve in the hook is and flip it. And it'll just pull the hook right out of the fish's mouth. And what do you do if a, if a fish has the hook so deep in his mouth that you can't get it out? <laughs> the best thing to do would cut be to out. cut the line as close to the hook as you can, all right? Because that hook could actually rot out in the fish's mouth and he can continue to grow up and become a big fish, okay? We're off to the next station, so come on, let's go. I'm going to quickly talk about the flounder or fluke up north, and he adapts himself in a couple ways. One, the color. He can change his color depending on his surrounding sand or mud because he backs himself and buries himself in the mud with keeping just his head out of water. His round tail means he can have short distances of high speed, and his mouth is formed up so that when a shrimp comes by, he can quickly go up, grab the shrimp, come right back down and bury himself back in that mud or sand, whatever the case might be. Also, he has these spots on him. These spots are like eyes. They look like eyes to other fish, other predators. And they think they're going for his eyes. And meanwhile, they're way up here in the front, hard to see. Probably one of our best eating fish in the area. But be careful at anything we talk about. Redfish, snapper, grouper, flounder. Make sure that he's within the legal size limits. If you do not have him in the right size, throw him back because the fine isn't worth keeping, believe me. You all know what this is, right? This is a sandbar shark. We're all familiar with them, and this shark is contour colored. That means that on the top, it's a dark color, and it may be a brown or a gray on the bottom, right? And on the bottom, it's a lighter color. Right, they know already. Now. The reason for that is so when he's swimming on the bottom, he blends in, and that way he can go and attack anything, uh, any of his prey that are swimming at the surface. When he's on the surface, because of the light color on the bottom, he blends in with the sky, or the light from the sky. One thing to consider here is that this is a very fast fish, and you can tell that by his tail. That's a forked tail, and it helps him go very fast on the attack. What is one thing that uh, is a disadvantage for him? He has to keep swimming, and the reason he does, because if he stops, he drowns. 